The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. ACI conventions are dedicated to improving the design, construction, maintenance, and repair of concrete structures by offering committee meetings, technical and educational sessions, networking events, and exhibits. Learn about the methods for reducing environmental impact and increasing the efficiency of concrete at the ACI Fall 2010 Convention in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, October 24th through the 28th. For more convention information and to register, visit www.aciconvention.org. Please enjoy the presentations. The first speaker today is my friend from Stuttgart, Germany, a paper co-authored by Werner Fuchs and Rolf Elegehausen. Werner will be presenting the paper. He is the primary creator of what we understand as the CCD method. I think his life is only anchors. I hope he has a life beyond anchors, but I think he lives, breathes, and eats anchors. Werner's talk this morning will be adhesive anchors requirements for their reliable use in concrete construction. And Werner is the director of fastening technology research at the University of Stuttgart in Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, I present Werner Fuchs. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your in introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, for my presentation, Adhesive Anchors, Requirements for Their Reliable Use in Concrete Construction. First of all, let me show you some reliable fastenings with safety-related applications. On the left-hand side, you see a, a steel uh, substructure connected to concrete members, uh, then uh, the fixing of guardrails, of crash barriers. That means an uh, application with uh, shock impact loading. Then uh, we see the fixing of the footings of cranes uh, to a concrete slab. That means we have the dy dynamic loading. And even under sustained load, uh, the fixing of a, sus <coughs> uh, of a suspended ceiling in a tunnel. Common in all the, these applications is the advantage of the adhesive anchors over mechanical fasteners. Because the borehole is sealed in these cases by the adhesive, that means the adhesive prevents hazardous uh, sub substances, harmful emissions or pollutants from pen penetrating through the borehole into the concrete core. Other applications are the fixation of uh, mas uh, machinery or the supporting construction of piping. My talk is on requirements for their reliable use in concrete con construction. But what I can do in my presentation due to the lack of time is just touch some key aspects. Detailed information you will get from the following 17 presentations uh, dealing with uh, detailed information on provisions, their content, installation, installation proce uh, procedures, that means surveys on site, the design, sustained load, the effect of environmental conditions on the behavior of adhesive anchors, and so on. If we talk about adhesive anchors, we have three different product types. Uh, shown here are only two, and I will start with the injection type anchors. Uh, there, a two-part system is dispensed by means of a special dispenser and a mixing nozzle into the borehole. The adhesive could consist uh, of organic binding material, inorganic material, or both of them. 
The second one is, but it's not that much marketed in, in the United States, it's the so-called capsule type anchors. There we have very often glass capsules and according to an installer, the difficulty with these uh, type of anchors is to open the glass caps capsule and to pour the mortar into the borehole. As you all know, that would create a big misinstallation and I only can, can hope that this installer will never uh, in, install uh, such a glass capsule anchor since this would have fatal con consequences. Uh, but we will come later to that. The third product type I didn't show here, that's the open bulk systems. And open bulk systems can yield reliable fastenings only if they are uh, metered and mixed automatically and if after the installation procedure the machinery is cleaned properly. And here we are with the reliability and the human beings because reliability depends man mainly on the amount of human errors during the application process of adhesive anchors. And therefore, the first requirement, and that's the overall requirement, is we have to reduce the amount of human er errors which could influence the structural behavior of those anchors. That means what we have to have is, first of all, error-tolerant products. We have to have a user-centered design. We have to have safe installations and a qualified supervision. Concluded in this chart here, we have producers which should produce an efficient fastening systems. Educated engineers should perform an accurate design and the installers should install the product correctly. Now, what's the actual situation right now? In 2006, AC58 from ICC was uh, superseded by ICC AC308. That means in the meantime, we have for concrete applications, we have an up-to-date design method and we have an up-to-date uh, pre-qualification system in, in place. But if you compare this chart with the previous one, then you will see there is something missing. missing. And ACI 2011, tries to cover this because in ACI 601 we are working on an adhesive anchor certification uh, program and, and training program. This hopefully will be finished in summer th this year and that means there we have covered a parameter to reduce the human error. The design procedures of ACI 318 are very similar to what we have in AC 308 and the pre-qualification procedures, that I will show you uh, some more details in the next slides, are nearly similar to what we have in AC308, with the difference that in uh, ACI355 we have more mandatory tests. During anchor pre-qualification, which should yield reliable products, we uh, <coughs> distinguish between four types of tests, those are the identification tests, which are the baseline for the quality control program within the production facilities. We have the reference tests, which are the baseline uh, with regard to the reliability tests, which test the sensitivity to what occur, could occur during service life and uh, during in installation with the adhesive uh, anchors. Furthermore, with the reliability tests, the anchor categories in ACI 318 Appendix D, that means the design method, are established. What has to be pointed out here at this place is that the reliability tests do not cover gross, gross installation errors. And last but not least, we have the so-called service condition tests, and they are to establish the characteristic resistance to be used in design. If we look in detail into the pre-qualification, we 
have the mandatory tests. That means each product has to pass the following ones if it wants to be requalified. That means we have to look at the product, the drilling method, the concrete, its strength, the regional variation of the, the concrete. We have to look at the whole, whole cleaning procedure, the installation process, the mixing of the adhesive, the condition of the uh, concrete, cracked, uncracked, the installation direction, the temperature. We look at uh, freeze-thaw conditions uh, during in, in service. We cover sustained loading, chemicals, that means the resistance to alkalinity of the concrete, and the curing time. Optional tests are the whole cleaning in a water-filled hole or submerged concrete, the installation at decreased temperatures, the resistance to sulfur, what's very important if we uh, go to road constructions, tunnels because of uh, the uh, diesel em emissions, the installation direction such as overhead and seismic loading. From this you can see that there are because of the options, a, a variety of different approvals or evaluation service reports on the, on the market. And therefore, the designer very carefully has to compare his requirements from in-service and installation with that what is given in the evaluation service reports. What does that mean in detail? The anchor selection by the designer is governed by the following points. First, the loading conditions, the location of the fastening, the concrete characteristics and its conditions, and the environmental conditions. That's what, an installer, uh, what a designer normally does because he takes care of the service life of the fastening. But in addition, he has to look at the location of the adhesive anchor. Is it possible to bore a hole at especially that point in practice. He has to look at the installation direction and the environmental conditions during installation. That means if he considers the service life and what's going on on site during ins installation, he can properly select a product. If he has selected that product, he can design it. And there we have with chemical anchors a design procedure which is very similar to what we know from mechanical anchors. The only difference is that we have to perform a verification for the sustained load and there we have a difference between AC308 and ACR318 because the reduction factor for sustained load in AC308 is 0.75 and in ACR318 we are more conservative with a factor of 0.55. We will listen to uh, the dif different arguments supporting 0.55 or 0.75 uh, this afternoon. An another verification is necessary, and that's the prediction of the pull-out capacity by equations. That means there something has to be calculated. These design provisions agree very well with uh, test results, which is shown just in, in uh, this chart. Now, if you have designed uh, the anchor, then we have to install it. And the actual situation here in the States is that there is no qualification of the anchor installer required. Instead, a special inspection is required. That means the special inspection inspector has to take care of the storage conditions of the adhesive, the application of the correct installation equipment, and so on. That means the special inspector must be aware of the negative impact of the deviations from the manufacturer's product installation ins instructions on the anchor performance. Now let's go to Europe where we have qualified installers and no uh, special inspection. This shows the chart from a survey several, several years uh, ago where we did a survey with installers and the system in, under investigation were in injection system where as a method of borehole cleaning there was required blowing and brushing. 
What you can see from that sur surveys many years ago was uh, that 30% uh, of the installers don't clean the, the hole, only 33% uh, brushed it and 37% brushed and blowed according to the MPII. And these should be qualified persons. In the meantime, the manufacturers and also some other institutions has, have set, set up uh, different training programs and with that the situation uh, I think has improved. But just note that gross errors are not covered by pre-qualification tests and not brushing and not cleaning, that's a gross error. Therefore, because um, the situation in the States is not, I think, uh, very dif different from that what we experience in Europe on, on, on site in the meantime, the ACI 601 install anchor installer training and cer certification program was installed. Shortly spoken, it uh, shall realize that an installer can read, comprehend, and execute uh, manufacturer's product installation instruction. To verify his skills, he has to perform a written and a performance exam. Let me conclude. We have pre-qualification test program, which programs in place which yield reliable products. We have design methods which yield reliable designs, and with a training program, we have also certified installers which could yield reliable fastenings all together. The only thing to come from a, now I would say, excellent solution to a perfect solution would be to have something in place which could train the qualified inspectors. Thank you very much. I got a question for you regarding the uh, survey you did in Germany uh, on the borehole cleaning. It's a twofold question. First, the question is, was there a comparison between what was required according to the product manufacturer installation and what they actually did, or was it an open survey with open question? And the second question relates to your statement that not blowing and not brushing constitutes a cross error. I'm especially aware of a product where these two types of things are not required and they are tested accordingly. So I would not consider this from a personal point of view as a cross error mm -hmm. for those products where it's not required. Well, let me first respond to your second question. When this survey was made, this product where no cleaning via, via brushing and blowing is required was not on the, on the market. So the first one, it, it was an uh, open sur survey with regard to injection type anchors and uh, all the injection type anchors in Europe within the cleaning method, it is required that there is a, a blowing and brushing process. Just to follow up a brief, uh, may I just uh, state my opinion again? You did uh, the expression across areas not covered not in relation to the survey, but as a general statement, and I think we need to clarify that. A gross error is not covered by the reliability tests. That's the statement. No, I agree with you, Mr. Fuchs, but uh, the issue is that you consider certain brushing elements not being done across error, and that's what I want to say. It's just not a general statement currently that not brushing is across error. It depends on the manufacturer installation and where yes, it's required. Correct, yes, yes, I agree. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.